of lightning. More powerful than the pounding surf. Mightier than a roaring hurricane. This amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. crime, the body of an elderly man has just been found in the marsh flats outside the city. He has been identified as the watchman at the Metropolis Munitions Plant. There's a story, or I'm no reporter. He is believed to be the victim of an organized ring of saboteurs. More news later. Huh, sounds like there might be a story at the plant, Lois. Lois? Me name is Lois, not Lois. Gee whiz, everybody in Toypa me name wrong. It's Lois. L-O-U-I-S. Lois, er, uh, uh, Louise, er, uh, Lucy. Now I'm so mixed up, I don't know who I am. <laughs> okay, Watchman, take your post in the main shop. Be on the alert. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Pardon me. Upstairs, 12 o'clock. Very important. Report upstairs, 12 o'clock. Very important. <laughs> on the watchman last night. Now, uh, how about that dynamite charge under the shops? It's wired to the switch on the plant floor below. When the new watchman pulls that switch tonight, the whole Shh. place... Shh. Jones speaking. Hello, Jones. 
We're ready for the test. Send out the torpedo immediately. Immediately. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. This amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. Lane and Clark Kent. Give me a follow up on this bullet car story. Metropolis. Attention. The destruction of your police station today was only a small demonstration of our power. 
Unless your mayor turns over the entire funds to the city treasury, power plants, firehouses, and all municipal buildings will be next. Take heed. This is your last warning. What are the authorities going to do about this, Mr. Mayor? We won't be intimidated by criminal threats. Law and order must and will prevail. This looks like a job for Superman.
going, Lois. Another great scoop for you. It was easy. Thanks to Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. This amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. I can't go with you, Lois, but I have another story to cover. Oh, that's all right, Clark. I'll see you in the office.
like a job for Superman. how Superman turns up just when you need him. I didn't even get a chance to thank him. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. This amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. 
possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. Penetrating deep into the frozen wastes of the great Arctic plains, an archaeological expedition searching for prehistoric fossils makes an amazing discovery. A huge monster, as lifelike in appearance as when it roamed the Earth millions of years ago in the Mesozoic Age, is found frozen in the ice in a state of perfect preservation. Constantly handicapped by the hazardous sub-zero elements, the scientists and their band of tireless workers succeed in removing the mammoth creature from the frozen pit. The ice-encased monster is loaded into the hold of a huge freighter equipped with a special refrigeration plant and brought to this country. Here, in a specially constructed wing of the Museum of Natural Science, this awe-inspiring creature is displayed to the public for the first time. say that if the ice were permitted to thaw, there's a possibility the monster might still be alive? Thank you, Professor. Yes, Chief. Lois, there's a new angle on that frozen monster story. Get over to the museum and see what's doing. They've got him in a special refrigerator. Okay, Chief. Oh, Lois, want me to go over there with you? No, thanks. You'd probably faint if you saw the monster. You scare so easily. Maybe she's right, but Superman hasn't fainted yet. And produces the necessary refrigeration. The control board is downstairs. I'll show it. The entire plant is operated from this board. The thermometer must be watched constantly as any rise in temperature might prove dangerous. Boy, what a story! Get lively, please. Use the nearest exit. Please, folks, keep moving. We have to clear this room at once. That's what he thinks. Police headquarters. Hello, Chief. Send the riot squad. We're in trouble. to fit the men at once. Chief, Lois is in the museum. Better get over there, Kent. Right. This looks like a job for Superman.
Lois. Superman. You'd better get back to your office where you'll be safe. I've got some work to do. Yes, sir. And it's the best story in years. Well, chance. Plenty of courage getting that monster story, Lois. Thanks, but where were you? Me? Oh, I must have fainted. Clark, do you suppose... Yes, Lois? 
Oh, nothing. Just a silly hunch that maybe Superman might be over here. Quiet. Do not talk.
In the endless reaches of the universe, there once existed a planet known as Krypton, a planet that burned like a green star in the distant heavens. There, civilization was far advanced and had brought forth a race of supermen whose mental and physical powers were developed to the absolute peak of human perfection. But there came a day when giant quakes threatened to destroy Krypton forever. One of the planet's leading scientists, sensing the approach of doom, placed his infant son in a small rocket ship and sent it hurtling in the direction of the Earth just as Krypton exploded. The rocket ship sped through star-studded space landing safely on Earth with its precious burden, Krypton's sole survivor. A passing motorist found the uninjured child and took it to an orphanage. As the years went by and the child grew to maturity, he found himself possessed of amazing physical powers. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. The infant of Krypton is now the man of steel, Superman! To best be in a position to use his amazing powers in a never-ending battle for truth and justice, Superman has assumed the disguise of Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Kent, I want to see you. Just received another threatening note. Okay, Mr. White. Lois, another note from the mad scientist. Coming in, Chief. Well, listen to this warning. He plans to strike tonight. Beware, you fools. My electrophanasia ray strikes tonight at 12. Total destruction will come to those who laughed at me and failed to heed my warnings. Beware, I strike at midnight. This nut may prove dangerous. Kent, you help Lois follow up her lead. She may have an angle on this thing. Yes, sir. But, Chief, I'd like the chance to crack the story on my own. No, no. Thanks, Chief. But, Lois. Chief, don't you think that's a dangerous mission? Porter for the So you want a story? I'll give you the greatest story of destruction the world has ever known. How is 
is that for a story, Miss Lane? <laughs> Flat, the mad Zionist, whose warnings have held the city in a grip of terror, went on his rampage of destruction on the stroke of midnight. The deadly impact of his mysterious ray smashed the famous Tower Bridge, hurling cars and pedestrians into the river below. The police have warned everyone to remain in their homes. This looks like a job for Superman. Congratulations, Lois. That was a great scoop. Yes, Chief. Thanks to Superman.
than a roaring hurricane. This amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. It's about time you showed up. Come on, come on, hand it over. Okay, boss. Here it is. This is a swell racket, boss. And the Superman outfit, it works like a charm. <laughs> It'll be a Mickey Finn. Grim turns foe. Why, that's ridiculous. It couldn't be Superman. What do you make of it, Clark? Hey, you two. The editor wants you to cover the opera tonight. And don't forget... It's formal. Good. Now I can wear my new evening gown. Did you enjoy the opera? What's the matter, stupid? Did you lose your tongue? Don't stand there like a dummy. Give me the jewels. Or are you trying to double-cross me? 
Why, you... Hey, boss, that's Mr. Superman. Well, I uh, didn't expect to see you here. newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. Now look here, Kent. You can't pick your assignments. Hurry over and cover that consumer's meeting. But, Chief... But nothing. That's final. was a close call. I've got to get to police headquarters immediately. What? You're 
Hamlisch in Schafskapfer. I send you out to bring back that woman. And what happens? You let her get away and bring me this fool. She must not get to the airport. She must be stopped. They are probably the largest and most ruthless gang of saboteurs in this country. I know. For six months, they thought I was one of them. This briefcase contains a list of their names, together with their diabolical plans of destruction. They will stop at nothing to recover these records. I must get them through to Washington. Mm, I understand. I'll see that you have an escort to the airport. This way, quick! on the bridge. The place is surrounded by them. Hello? Edwidge? Hello? Hello? Zoom done about that. Something went wrong. We've got to get those records. Thank you. 
in a streak of lightning. More powerful than the pounding surf. Mightier than a roaring hurricane. This amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. Dr. Jordan, yet you admit these fingerprints are yours. Yes, but, but you don't... That's all. Can't speaking. Hello, Daily Planet. This is Dr. Wilson of the Egyptian Museum. I've just uncovered something that may free Miss Hogan. Yes, Doctor. Uh, I, I've been feeling much better lately, but I'll be right over. I'll see you later, Lois. Doctor's orders. Doctor, my eye. Dr. Jordan was the world's foremost student of hieroglyphics. Most of our priceless specimens were brought back by him, even the mummy of King Tush. Among his possessions, I uncover this ancient Egyptian tablet and find it to be a secret curse of the tomb of King Tush. He who disturbs the eternal sleep of King Tush shall perish. This tablet may well be Miss Hogan's passport to freedom. Come with me, please. Upper Nile was ruled by an old and powerful king. He had been warring with the Lower Nile for many years, and just before the old king died, he called his son to him, a young boy of twelve. He commanded his giant guards to swear an oath of eternal allegiance to the boy prince to guard him constantly in this world and the next. Shortly after, the old king died. The youth of twelve now ruled the kingdom of ten million people, but the boy was not fashioned for such responsibility, and being of a sickly nature, soon became ill himself. Never was a person attended more faithfully than this youth, yet he withered away and soon died. True to their oath of allegiance, each of the royal gods drank poison, so that they might continue to protect the spirit of their young king in the Valley of the Dead. Here in these catacombs, Dr. Jordan has reconstructed the burial vault exactly as he first discovered it in one of the pyramids. Working for years in absolute and frenzied secrecy, he finally duplicated an ancient mystic formula, which he called the fluid of life. Just before he was found dead, Dr. Jordan had inoculated each of the mummies of the giant guards. They were supposed to return to life but somehow the test failed. Dr. Jordan was found here at the feet of King Tush. The rest you know. But what you don't know, Mr. Kent, and what I am equally certain of, is that Dr. Jordan violated the ancient warning by attempting to open the coffin of King Tush. <laughs> Oh, 
poisonous needle. That's how Dr. Jordan was killed. Yes, and Miss Hogan is a free woman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. This amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Empowered with X-ray vision, possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent.
Lois, what are you doing here? Oh, just getting the woman's angle on this story. The mechanical monster! Look out! this in. Yes, I'll give you the details later, Chief. All right, Lois. Let Lois! or Superman. story this is going to make. The jewels. What have you done with the jewels? You'll read about it in tomorrow's paper. Are you going to tell me what happened to those jewels? <laughs>
ship and she's doomed. That's a wonderful story, Lois. Thanks, Clark, but I owe it all to Superman. never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. I should be glad when I'm finished with my work here. Uh, Captain, the submarine fleet commander is impatient for news of the American convoy. He will be advised of its location shortly. To your post. By still. Miss Lane. Yes? Here, take these. Important papers. Destroy them. Ah, American stubbornness. I give you just ten minutes to remember what you did with those papers or I will be forced to brighten your memory with fire. So! So what? Das ist genug! Tell 
you the location of the papers. I can... I have to look! Your Yankee baby was in vain! <laughs> Hurry! Contact submarine fleet commander at first! Yeah, oh. like they're having a party down there. And us not invited. How do you like that? What's that? It's planning ship. Empty. I wonder. an entire fleet of Axis submarines was destroyed by American dive bombers, affording the troop ships a safe crossing. For the mighty mission, praise the Lord, and pass the ammunition and will Up in the sky! Oh, it's a bird! It's a plane! It's
flame of the Daily Planet. Clark Kent, Planet. And in operation, this stabilizer is one of the most effective yet devised, representing an investment in years. How'd you like to be making the test flight in this, Lois? Hmm, maybe I will. <laughs> Fine, Jan. Everyone off, please. Everyone off. Come on, Lois. That's us. Say, by the way, Lois. Lois. interfere with voyage to Tokyo. Attention, all pilots. Giant bomber being stolen. Take off immediately. <laughs> well placed bomb will stop pursuit. Looks like a job for Superman.
you're safe in this plane, Lois. I feel much safer if Superman were here. <laughs> Do you suppose... Yes, Lois? Oh, nothing. Just a silly hunch that maybe Superman might be over here. Quiet. Do not talk.
Did he get away? No. No, he's still over there. But don't worry. Superman promised to look after him. 